All right, my friends, welcome back to another episode of the Build Show podcast. That's right, my weekly time to get together with you guys and go a little deeper than we have time for on YouTube. And today, I've got a special guest. I've got the founders of this product right here. If you've watched any of my Instagram or TikTok feeds or if you've seen any of my YouTube videos, probably one of my most popular, most viral videos was about this product we're about to talk about today called Stellar Floors. I've got the founders. Uh, the owners, this is a family owned company from my home state, Pennsylvania. Uh, so with that being said, let's get going on today's build show all about hardwood floors from Stellar. Let's get going. All right guys, before we pop into today's build show, I wanna say a quick plug for a brand new series that the Build Show Network has coming out with my friend Brent Hall. Brent is an amazing craftsman. If you've seen his videos, and I'm assuming that you have, he's probably the most detailed craftsman I've ever met in my whole life. A huge wood nerd, a huge uh, amazing nerd and studier of the craftsmanship and the carpentry uh, in American homes over the years. And we've got a brand new series coming out with Brent here in just a couple months, depending on uh, published date. I suspect you'll see this around July timeframe. It's gonna be called Old House, New Soul. How do we build a new house that has the soul, the feel, the look, the, that certain, I don't know what it is about those old houses that just felt so right. Brent's gonna be digging into this multi-part series and Stellar Floors is gonna be a part of this. Now let's jump into my guests and today's build show about Stellar. So first off, let me do this to you, Evan and Britta from Stellar. Evan and Britta, thank you for making the trip from Pennsylvania yeah, all the way course. to the studio today. Yeah, sure yeah. thing. So guys, uh, I said it earlier, we absolutely went ridiculously viral on some of the videos we've made with you guys because your hardwood floor product has a, trick's probably not the right word, but I'm gonna use that word because it's kind of a cool <laughs> one. It has a trick that no one had ever seen before. Yeah. And I suspect yeah. some people listening to the podcast or maybe watching the video version of this haven't seen it either. Evan, you're the original founder mm -hmm. uh, or you're the original patent holder, I should say. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is it that's different about Stellar Hardwood Floors? So the Stellar Hardwood Floor, what you have is you have a full thickness solid hardwood plank. So the same piece of wood top to bottom. Yep. And instead of being nailed or glued down to the subsurface, what we have is a connector that holds board to board instead of board to subfloor. So basically, if you have your floorboards there, you can end up setting them beside each other and you just put down pressure on it and they snap together. So so instead of, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. Yeah, go just, right ahead. Just painting the word picture for those listening in their trucks right now on the way to the job yeah. site. It's, it's, uh, it almost looks like a one by four, one by six, because you've got a square edge mm -hmm. on this floor instead of the traditional tongue and groove. Mm -hmm. But where the secret sauce is, is you have this this connector piece, some type of, uh, I don't know what this is, polypropylene? Rigid PVC. Rigid PVC, Same okay. as drain pipes, yep. And uh, if you look at your Stellar logo, this kind of reminds me of your, I'm assuming this mm -hmm. is where the logo yep. name came yep. from. It's kind of, uh, if, you're, if you're listening, it's kind of two J's mm -hmm. that are sideways with a uh, with the, almost like a bulb or a gasket mm -hmm. maybe in the yep. center. And then your the way that you've milled your floors enables you to accept that piece into the floor itself. And again, this is hard for me to paint the word picture for those listening, but if you've seen the videos, it's crazy. I mean, this this floor just pops together mm -hmm. and is not held together with nails. It's in effect a floating floor, right? Mm -hmm. Entirely floating, not even the connectors are affixed to the subfloor. And it builds the floor system as you go. So you don't have to lay the connectors first and then make sure everything lines up to snap the piece in. Each piece aligns the next connector and the connector holding piece to piece causes each row to be truly straight. That's crazy. So yeah, yeah. It's a and really, when the floor really is done, point. it looks like any other traditional hardwood floor. You wouldn't know that's not a five-year-old or fifty-year-old or hundred-year-old hardwood floor. Right. But the the trick, I guess, is the, the best thing I would say that that blew my mind when I saw you do it the first time. I think you were at uh, Joey Pewterbaugh's house on an install. Yeah. Uh, who used to work for us on the build show. And you have a suction cup that you suck onto a middle board, let's say a board right in the field. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden with one little 
you pop that board right off the center of the floor. Yep. yep. And then my eyes got, got <laughs> giant. And I was like, what just happened? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, one of the big things, and that actually was a... I'll say an interesting side benefit of the invention. A fluke. Um, it was, a, it was fluke. a fluke. It was a fluke. We'll be <laughs> honest. It was a fluke. Um, but I built the system to work well with the wood material. So I have a wood science background. Okay. And so I built a system that would allow the wood to float and expand and contract as it changes with humidity. And then once we had it there, my dad and I designed it together. And once we had a prototype and we were playing around with it, my dad looked at it and he goes, I bet you could pull a board right out of the middle of that. <laughs> and so we played, first thing we did was we drove a screw down and it grabbed it with pliers and tried it and it worked. And then we played around with a couple different suction cups to figure out how it would work that way. And it just adds a whole nother level to the invention because yeah. it allows you to do that maintenance or upkeep that yep. traditionally has not been a part of traditional hardwood floors. That's interesting. I hadn't thought about it from a maintenance side. I was thinking about it more like job site damage mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, or, you know, the dog pees in this, in yep. this terrible spot or whatever. Mm -hmm. The kid throws up and, and you realize that you've messed up your floor. Right. Yeah. Um, tell me about what you think of for maintenance. So almost. maintenance, one of the things is like in a, in a install, humans are creatures of habit. We walk one path. All right, right. So when you have to refinish a home right now, people live with damage in their floors for way longer than they have to because not enough of the floor is damaged to call someone in. All right. Sand the Great whole point. thing down, deal with the dust, be out of your house for two weeks as the polyurethane sets to a point where you can be living and walking on it again. You might only damage what? A third of the floor? What would Less, you think? Yeah. Less. We did some of the math on it. And um, it's not a very high damage rate. So if you had spare planks or if you wanted to rotate the planks in your floor around yeah, crazy to kind to of about. get them all to evenly wear so that then when you refinish, there's a good reason to refinish at a faster turnaround. Or take the boards underneath your rug and yep. flop yep. those out. Yep. Like in my case, my hardwood floors under my refrigerator are starting to look bad. Yep. Right. Because yep. my kids get water out of the fridge and, and always spill water mm -hmm. on the floor mm -hmm. there. <laughs> uh, so, you know, two years later, my hardwood floors look bad just in, you're right, just yeah. in a couple just in spots. Just one or two yeah. areas, yep. Yeah. And those um, refinishing costs can be pretty high because it's, the whole square footage. Yeah. And so if you can even um, our product, we make it in standard lengths. So even if you just wanted to replace that plank, you can call in, get a replacement piece that fits exactly in that spot pull that piece out. Well, and people in. always ask about patina too, because mm -hmm. the sun can change the color of your sure. floor. Yeah. Uh, but we love the idea that you can also uh, sort of shuffle planks into that area from mm -hmm. in the patinaed area and put your new plank in yep. the shadow. In the shadow. It matches everything yeah. in the corner of the yeah. room. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, and so again, with the five fixed lengths, it means you don't even have to pull a saw out. You can just pull the plank out from underneath your couch and take the damaged one and hide it under your couch until you're ready to repair or replace that plank. Yeah. That's pretty smart. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll make an admission. We're millennials, so I like to say that it gives the edit undo feature <laughs> to flooring. So, yeah. Well, and since we just have uh, standard polyurethane, it's 220 grit sandpaper and just yeah, all your thing off the hardware can, store shelf. Nothing to it. Brush nothing it up. to it. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. wild. Now, now you, you told me before we started podcasting that this isn't your only patent, and I'm holding up the clip that kind of holds your floors together. You actually mm -hmm. have multiple patents. Uh, tell me what those patents are, and I'm curious. Like, was this a nighttime epiphany while you were, uh, you know, sleeping at one point, or where did all this come from? So. Um, I'll start with where it came from because I think that's a that's a story that I really like. So um, my dad worked for Penn State University as an extension agent in their forest products program. Okay. And so for his whole career, he was going around to large and medium sized wood products companies and helping them improve their process, process um, improve their products and track down defects, basically help them do better at their jobs. Okay. And, and Pennsylvania still is a pretty big forest industry, right? It's huge. It's, huge. Yep. Cabinets, it's absolutely caskets, huge. Yeah. Yep. Baseball bats, ax handles. Wow. Yep. And so that. it's, it, that industry is kind of a quiet giant. People don't think of how much wood products infiltrate everything we own or have yeah, or anything like for that. For sure. But um, so when he retired, I also graduated college at that point. And from Penn State? From Penn State, okay. yep. Great and school. so at that same time, the college restructured and the School of Forest Resources got dissolved. Hmm. So all these companies that would get assistance from him 
through the college, still had these problems, still needed help, were still calling him. And so him and I started a consulting business. Mm. So I actually learned from him everything about wood products that he accumulated over his 36 years in the wood products industry. And from that, from working with those companies, we got to see the way a lot of big companies operate. We got to sit in on a lot of um, R&D meetings, R &D meetings <laughs> like um, warranty development <laughs> things between these big companies. So you got to learn a lot of the good parts and bad parts about the industry. And we got to see a lot of the reoccurring problems. Huh. And so one day we were working with um, this homeowner who put a floor in, and we used to do a lot of diagnostic CSI type work. With on wood. hardwood floors. On hardwood floors, yeah. on cabinetry, on a bunch of Because you're basically like big that. wood nerds. Exactly, yeah. huge wood nerds. <laughs> yeah. um, so we were at this house, and the whole center of the house was like you put a canoe upside down on the floor. Is like that the right? floor just breaks massive right up. Massive buckle. Yep, massive buckle, and we were trying to figure out what was wrong with it, and we were sitting down at lunch after going through it, and my dad looked at me and he goes, you know, it's not that it's wood that's the problem. It's that you try and hold it still. Wood is a biological material. It has to expand and contract with moisture changes in the home. Mm -hmm. Our home environments change. And or as Matt will tell you, they should not change. They should not yeah. change, but, yeah. but they do. There's but they plenty do. of poorly built houses <laughs> yes. that have yeah. hardwood floors. Yes. So. Exactly. So if, it cha if the humidity <laughs> changes, your floor should be able to adapt. Right. right and so go. the thing is, is that... Um, by nailing it to a subfloor, which is a material that fundamentally doesn't change that much, mm -hmm. you're asking it to do something it doesn't want to do, which is right. stay still. All right, and, and they're also dissimilar woods too, yeah. which I would think would make yeah. dissimilar so, woods know, composites. You've got so softwood, particle particle plywoods woods. underneath there as yep. your subfloor, mm -hmm. and then you've got a hardwood up top. Yep, yeah. exactly. And they're going to move differentially. They're going to yeah, and change differentially with when with people think about movement. squeaks. Squeaks are often because nails are holding down a wood plank that wants to move. Yeah, yeah. so like a lot of the sense. old squeaking in old farmhouse floors is actually the wood has expanded and contract and worked that nail loose. Mm -hmm. And so as you step, you slide down the nail, making a squeak. Yep. And then when you step off of it, the wood relaxes right, back up the nail, right. making a squeak. So there's like all these things with it. Um, but anyways, my dad's sitting at lunch with me and he goes, you know, it's not the fact that, the wood, that it's wood, it's the fact that they nail it down. So if you could float a wood floor, it'd be the best of both worlds. It'd be a really great, really high quality product. And I'm guessing that you weren't big fans of uh, Pergo or, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what the other brand names are. That's just the brand name I remember from my childhood, which is yeah. a really yeah. uh, poopy branded, uh, <laughs> you know, laminate floor that's probably all composite or plastic, right? So the thing about laminates is you have to realize that wood is a biological tissue. It expands and contracts, but it doesn't even do it evenly. It expands more across tangentially, or its width, than it does in its thickness, and it barely goes at all in length. Okay. So it's not a homogenous material. Got it. A lot of the engineers and a lot of the people who do product development out there have been schooled in engineering, which focuses heavily on steels and plastics, mm -hmm. which are isotropic materials. They do the same thing in all directions. Makes sense. So when you go with MDF or particle board or even plywood, what they've done is they've diced wood up, glued it back together with a polymer in all different orientations so it is more even in all the directions. It right. behaves more like a man-made material. Interesting. And so that's kind of one of the reasons that they go with that. It's a, it's making a material fit what you know mm -hmm. instead of knowing a material to make a system that fits it. And Smart. so that's kind of the whole Ikea thing was yeah. to take something, make it more predictable, uh -huh. and then make something out of it. The problem then, is it still expands and contracts, and they can't make a polymer that matches a, a glue that matches the expansion and contraction of wood. So as soon as it takes on moisture, it blows itself apart. Right. is the big problem, right. or that delaminates, or has yep. a problem like that. Well, and I wouldn't say that we hate other kinds of flooring at all. I think they have a, a different... Oh, I'm okay. not <laughs> I only <laughs> build hardwood to my house. Yeah. I'm not going to build any budgets. Yeah. Well, I mean, on some I'm level... I'm not a fan of those other floors. Th there's folks with a budget, and in, in my mind, actually, the, the worst-case scenario is a low-cost hardwood floor. Um, mm -hmm. If what you're doing is you're in the race to the bottom and you're mass producing something at low quality and you're not paying your workers well, and that's how it got to be cheap and it got to be hardwood, right? Like to me, that's almost worse than just admitting like this is plastic. It's my basement. 
like, and I have mm-hmm. $2 to yeah. spend, yeah. right? It's almost like, tell the truth about what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's been really important to us through growing this business that we didn't create a cheap, low quality product yeah. that was gonna disappoint right. people. Yeah. Um, whether it was disappointing them in their home or disappointing them like socially by not like paying craftspeople well, right? right. Um, or disappointing contractors by having so much overage. One of the interesting, as a fly on the wall, as a consultant, (laughs) one of the interesting um, conversations we were a part of is big flooring companies like to sell 15% overage. 15, 20, sometimes it's as high as 20. Yeah. That's massive And they know, they know. Because we've been there, we've heard them say they know. 10 to 15% of their (laughs) boards, they never expect to make flooring boards. They will send you boards that they already know are trash. Here, you throw my trash away. Wow. They don't actually do the quality assurance, the pulling it out. They know that if they recommend this amount of overage, they can send you a piece with a knot, which is never going to make a good flooring plank, and it's in the accepted overage category. Interesting. And so you're paying a premium. You're paying a 10% premium, and even though you got 10% off, surprise, surprise. Right. You paid full price. That's wild. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and did I hear earlier that, uh, Britta, all your woods are actually Pennsylvania woods as well? Yeah. So as, as much as possible, we try to source as locally as possible. Um, so sometimes we'll still source from Ohio or other parts of the Appalachians. But we definitely stick with North American hardwoods to help support our supply chains uh, sort of regionally. Um, and it's That's also really cool. more sustainable. It's a lower mm-hmm. carbon footprint, less shipping, things like that. Yeah. Now, now I have to. We brought this up before the podcast. So I got to bring this up for uh, sure. for the listeners. And I don't know that this is true, but I had a friend tell me, and I'm going to take this as a uh, at least a B plus in, in reputation from this friend. He, he's a really <laughs> smart guy. He knows his plants. And I've put a lot of European oak floors in houses mm-hmm. over the years. And my anecdotal feeling is that European oaks tend to be softer. And this is nothing like there's no I'm not going to whip out some Jenka hardness scale. I don't mm-hmm. even know what that is exactly, but it sounded smart. <laughs> um, but over the years, whenever I've put European floors down, I feel like they've dented more. Mm-hmm. We've had more incidental construction damage, mm-hmm. and they've tended to need refinishing sooner. I told this to a friend of mine, and, and he immediately came out and said, oh, you know why? Uh, you know, during the American Revolution, the American ships were going up against the British ships, and you know our cannonballs would blow right through those european oak built ships whereas the american ships got the reputation old iron sides because our american oaks were harder and our ships were harder to sink than their european counterparts mm-hmm. now i don't know if this is absolutely love true but it's yeah. love it. but at least it's a really fun story to tell and it yeah. and it incidentally kind of seems to make sense i mean all the years that i've been building well that's not true uh, I built for many years for production builders, and I put lots of carpet down on the <laughs> uh, and vinyl kitchens, which I'm sorry that I did. But for the last almost 20 years that I've been a custom builder, I put white oak down more than any other yeah. flooring mm-hmm. anywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, white oak is just an ama- an amazing uh, you know technology that God invented in that. It's super hard, it's super beautiful, Mm -hmm. it's totally refinishable. And whenever I tell my clients they're putting an oak floor down, I say, look, this is a 100-year floor plus. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. You're gonna be able to refinish this multiple times. And on multiple occasions, I've even come into houses that had 7,500 year old oak floors. We'd pull them uh, for the remodel because Mm -hmm. we were moving walls and things were happening. And we'd be able to save at least 50% of those boards or so mm-hmm. on an old school tongue and groove, yeah. not 100%. Um, and then we'd put them down. We'd put new white oak next to it. We'd sand and finish the whole thing. And by the time you stained it and put a new coat of poly on, you had no idea what was a 75-year-old part of the house and what was right. the brand yeah. new right. white yeah. oak floor. So, yeah. I mean, just in general, the idea of a wood floor, I think, is the most uh, sustainable, the most beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And honestly, I think it's in the long term, probably the least cost floor you're going to put down as well. Right. Even yeah. though your upfront costs may be a little bit more. Yeah. What's your What's your thought on all that? So the lifetime cost is definitely something that a home builder who, you know, is really building something. Maybe if you were building for someone else and you were on, you were doing it on a budget, I could see why you'd short you know, choose some product. I'm trying to be, <laughs> trying, to be graceful. trying to be graceful. Why you choose, make certain 
selections on yep. product. Yep. But if you're looking at a hardwood floor, like, yes, it may be a little bit more work to put it down and you might need a contractor who knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, the lifetime of that floor, it's just the sound qualities, the insulative qualities, the comfort of living and walking on it and all those things. It's just, it can't be beat. Like, well, it's, and it's been proven over and over too, that when you put a hardwood floor down, when you go to sell your house again, it appreciates in value, For sure. yeah. right? So mm -hmm. it's, sure. there's statistics everywhere to show that hardwoods in a home actually improve its value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you put in vinyl or something else, you know, people find out it's, you know, even if it looks perfectly like wood, right? <laughs> right <laughs> the yeah, realtor yeah. walks in and goes, that's vinyl. Huh? Yeah. yeah, you can totally um, tell. Yeah. And, you know, I think sustainable is so important to us as a company um, you know, those hundred year floors, you know, we've built these just like the hundred year floors you're talking mm -hmm. about. It's full thickness wood, so you can refinish it a whole bunch of times. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, this is also completely portable. You could move this floor. Mm -hmm. That's crazy you know? to think. And we, we've had clients. Have you heard any incidental stories about that, Britta? Someone yeah. who's bought one yeah. of your floors and then moved and oh, said, so you know many. what, I'm going to take this floor with me? The stories we've had from our clients are so exciting. You know, we had this one person call and they said, it happened. It happened. And we were like, oh, my God, what happened? Right. And and they said, we went on vacation and someone overwatered a plant and the corner of the room was completely ruined. But we got out our suction cup and repaired those planks ourselves. And now How life goes that? on. That's so awesome. Um, mm -hmm. And this one client said, I can't wait to bequeath these floors to my daughter. How about that? And it's like, you know, they can put them in their houses when, mm -hmm. you know, when when I'm gone. That's really and, cool. You know, the idea that you could resell your floor. We've actually put our floors. Mm -hmm. We had a studio floor uh -huh. um, and we wanted to change the color just in the studio. And so we put that floor on eBay. And it actually sold for six dollars a square foot, and at the time Lowe's was at five dollars a oh square foot. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. crazy! Um, and it's great because you, know, you just pack it up, ship it out, and you know our floors. You know we have five fixed lengths, so it's LTL shipping. There's no, mm -hmm. there's no like massive shipping costs because oh, you have wild. fourteen mm -hmm. foot lengths. Interesting. You know? yeah. Another um, thing I thought about when I was uh, watching the install at Joey's house was I thought, you know, when this does need to get refinished someday. You could pull the floor out and refinish it in the garage or outside, right? Mm -hmm. And then right. put it back down because the the laydown cost, the laydown time, was pretty small, right? And it's not like every piece needs to be in the exact same location, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Especially if you have, I mean, if you had rounded walls, maybe things would get wonky. But with square rooms, you could literally pop these floors off refinish them outside over the course of two or three days, put multiple coats on, change, sand, mm -hmm. plane, whatever you want, yep. reinstall that floor, and none of that mess, dust, well, nothing would be yeah. inside and the house. don't even take the whole floor outside. Do one plane at a time. one row at a time. You can do a couple boards at a time. One section at a time. When we, So I'm a big um, precision guy. And so when whenever I designed this floor, one of the things I was really excited about is I know the big walk behind sanders, that's mm -hmm. kind of the way it is now. But how do you make sure that you didn't sand some boards way more oh, yeah. than others around Good your point. house and yeah. actually make your floor unstable? If you have a finish planer or a drum sander in your garage, take them out, set it to a specific height. Blech. Every board gets sanded through, spray finish it, or we used to do some finishes with um, paint Roll rollers. Oh, that's yeah, smart. just paint yeah. roll it on, let it dry, and then put it back in. And then you could even be actively living in your home because you don't have the, the gases coming off mm. of the finishing. It's not down on the floor where you have to walk on it. You could be doing this, and then you just have like a row you have to watch out, oh, be careful of, or put like a temporary carpet down while you have that floor pulled up yeah. and oh. be doing it real time. Or a small business could start up with a facility where they'd pull up your floor, take it there, refinish, yeah. reinstall it. It kind of opens wow. a, a gate to a different type of market. Well, and it's early days for us. I mean, one of the things that I think is a huge testament to our quality is we would love to see these floors again, right? Yeah. So as a small business ourselves, as a growing business, it's in our interest to make sure that these floors are well taken care of. And what if it was us, right? Yeah. How about what that? What if we Ship had the back. service yeah. that Ship came Ship it back in. to your shop in PA. Mm -hmm. Or even you if I came to you, them all. With right? a truck that could. Yeah. If I came to you and if I could refinish for you, 
Um, or if I could even make you an offer to buy your floor back. Mm -hmm. right? How about that? Yeah. And yeah, I think and then that you can that, refinish it and resell it. Yeah, mm -hmm. for lead points. Oh, that's crazy. So for, commercial, for lead points, yeah, right, exactly. It's, yeah. it's, it's reclaimed in the same sense that you guys reclaimed floors and reinstalled them in the same house. Yep. For us, it's built to be reclaimed, right? right? So it's not pulled off a barn where it was outdoors It's forever. built to be reclaimed. It's built like to that. be reclaimed. That's really cool. And I think that that, you know, in, you know, green building circles is circular. You know, the idea that, you know, you, ha you want to be able to see this floor again. And we're making a huge investment in quality polymers and the plastics that we use and in the quality of wood. You know, we only buy FAS and F1F lumber. You won't find big knots in our floors mm. uh, because it makes it structurally unstable. Mm. And when, if there's humidity swings, ideally there aren't, but <laughs> if there are, the wood around the knot responds more strongly and responds and differently. Differently. Yeah, differently. Um, and so, on a solid wood plank, you wouldn't really want to see that for a hundred year floor. Huh. Yeah. Um, and for us, you know, you won't see big knots because. And you'll also see precision drying, right? We're very picky with the dryers that we yeah. use um, when we're supplying our materials. So, you know, when we when we send this out, we, it's almost like we want to, you know, we don't, we've never had anybody return a floor, believe it or not, <laughs> right? So we've never actually had somebody return a floor. But um, we'd like to see them again but, if they got used. It's, and it's, it's hard to, to say, I want or... to get a floor back, right? Yeah. As, as a yeah. manufacturer, yeah. it's like, verboten, right? right? It's like... Yeah. And I think earlier we mentioned, too, you know, during construction, it's so often that you have incidental damage. Mm -hmm. Somebody drops a hammer. Sure. Right. A staple in your knee pad. Something. Yeah. Or yeah, the something. water, like in my uncle's house, the uh, the water on the, the ice machine broke in the refrigerator and it soaked the floor underneath. Brand new house, brand new floor. They had to tear the whole thing up and it was on it the was builder. It was glued down. It was a glued wow. down engineer. To that yeah. liability for both the material costs and the labor to install it the second time around Dang. was completely on the builder. Right. And in that, in our case, repair and replace just the section that's damaged. Right. Or if you so catch it cool. in time, pull it up, dry it out, and put mm -hmm. it back down. Yeah, how would you do that? That's a good question. I was just thinking about that. Like if I had a water leak in my fridge ice mm -hmm. maker, yep. mm -hmm. and you realized it quick enough, could you pull enough boards and realize, okay, it's it stopped getting wet here. Yeah. This is yeah. fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. stop here. And then mm -hmm. the boards that I pulled, how, how could you dry those in a way that would, uh, you well, know, let's say so you caught it be. immediately. Well, let's say you caught it immediately. We do seal our planks on all sides. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. So we put a, a sealer on all sides. So what it does is it makes the, it slows These the moisture uptake. Not. Right. Yeah. It slows the moisture uptake and also it makes it even okay. on all faces. So you don't get warped due to uneven moisture absorbance. Moisture uptake. Right, exactly. Like, like the face would be, but the bottom wasn't kind of a thing. Right, so mm -hmm. any gotcha. any normal tongue and groove, what they do is they don't seal the bottoms. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of cup and crown in floors is because the moisture uptake in this surface accelerates past oh, the moisture uptake through okay. there. So a lot of the warp is due to what's called an imbalanced panel. Huh. And so, so, as you might know, if you paint a fence, you should paint both, both sides. sides of the fence. Right. However, here in flooring, we're only ever painting one side. Right. <laughs> right. Interesting. And so, basically, which means we should touch up the cut edges. Then exactly. Too, probably, we right? send we send the same sealer. It's a water based sealer hmm. to touch up the cut edges whenever you smart go through. But but that gives you added time. It's to not pick perfectly it up. water sealed. Right. No, right. no it's wood not waterproof. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's water. Resistant. So you still got to yeah. stick in a bag of rice until it dries. Well, all you have to do is you <laughs> just have to. Only if your emails to, are on it. <laughs> you just have to get even airflow. So if you pull it up and you huh. put it on saw horses or up off the ground so you get even airflow so it can dry on all sides. We've had a customer, uh, one of our first prototype floors, we put in a bakery in our hometown. Huh. And they're on a slab on grade used to be an old firehouse so the the subfloor is horrible we wanted to see how much we could actually handle get away with, get away uh, with. yeah so it was a great test case but they had a refrigerator leak not a refrigerator a air conditioner leak behind the wall so they didn't see it the floor didn't show warp for two, two weeks. weeks oh wow it sat in liquid water for two weeks and Dang. didn't show warp because of the sealers that's wild and then on top of that when we pulled those boards up we could pull boards up in exactly what you said follow the water back to where it stopped take those boards take them back to the shop set them up on saw horses let them dry down i only lost like four boards out of 26 wow, that's because crazy. they dried back 
flat. And now they're back in the bakery. That's awesome. Right. How cool right. is that? And most of it's because with the wood material, if you allow it to absorb m water too quickly disproportionately, it will break itself. Mm -hmm. And so it will never go back to flat because you've actually damaged the cellular structure. Got it. But if you have it absorb mo moisture evenly, it grows evenly and it doesn't overtax hmm. any one part of wow. the wood cell. And so it'll dry back to... And in addition, part of the craftsmanship that we put into our floors is really important. So what we'll do is this technique called joining. A lot of contractors will know it. Finding a flat section of board <laughs> in a curved tree. And uh, we, we do it by hand. So our mm. employees are joining our planks flat. Mm -hmm. And most flooring companies who are putting out their 14 foot lengths, you know, 12 foot lengths, are actually just taking curved wood, putting pressing it, it through flat. their molder, oh, wow. pressing milling it flat, it. And, and then the you get a ski out the it. other side. Right. right. You can, it remembers its shape. So yeah. if you don't make a flat base, you'll never get a flat right. board. Well, we oh, don't have wild. the privilege of a nail to nail down a real piece of crap, uh -huh. right? So it's so gotta be nice mm -hmm. and flat. It's gotta be f mm -hmm. real f stinking flat. Yeah. And um, straight. And straight. Like our straightness tolerances mm -hmm. are unbelievable in wood products. So oh, for a four wild. foot board, we are we don't deviate from true straight more than plus or minus one point five thousandths of an inch. Oh my gosh. So, so we are like precision straight on our lumber. When we go to talk to our machinists, they go, that's that guy trying to keep uh, thousands of an inch in an industry uh, that only keeps a 16th. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the nice part for that is it adds benefits on the back end. So once you clip four rows together, they make an auto straight line hmm. because they're held side to side oh, right, and they're yeah. milled so straight. So once you clip four rows together, then you can position it in your room. However you don't you have to you. snap a line. Right. You can visually position it and then build out from there. And That's it's awesome. enough to be stiff and straight so that you don't have to like worry that my first row is perfectly straight and then not mess up my second row by my first row because right. the system's built to make that wow. auto straight surface. That's interesting. And, and since it's flat to start, when it gets wet, if it gets dry, it goes back, it goes to, back it to its original shape, mm -hmm. which is flat. Right. Yeah. And so we're we're excited about that just simply for, you know, insurance. You know, when you've got, mm -hmm. uh, we've got adjusters calling us and they're like, I can't wait to tell my clients all about your floors because one of the most expensive components to replace in a flooded house is mm -hmm. the floor. Homeowners mm -hmm. insurance, one of their biggest line items. Year oh, year and, so floor expensive. Expensive. and you're almost mm -hmm. never getting back 100% of the value of your floor, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which means you can just repair the areas that are damaged. Oh, that's right? awesome. How so cool there's a, adjusters, are they, they get a bad rap because they can never reimburse you the, the amount you feel you're due. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, they would love to be able to say to somebody, yep, I can repair that, you know, area by the door that flooded, you mm -hmm. know, yep. um, or even if you got ahead of it and pulled up the planks and then your subfloor got wet, but you've saved your floor, yeah. right? Yeah. There's, right? There's definitely a lot of uh, ways you can cope with water, even though a hardwood floor is not designed explicitly to deal with water. Right. It's designed to sort of give you time. Mm -hmm. So I've got a process question for you as I'm thinking about this uh, and thinking about how could I put Stellar in my next project. Normally I'll um, finish drywall, prime, and then install my hardwoods before mm -hmm. I do trim mm -hmm. and before mm -hmm. I set doors because I'm typically looking to not have any additional shoe molds or you know scribe molds, things like that, and I'll set my base molding right on top of my floors. Mm -hmm. And then the I'll have the flooring guy, If you, let's say we're putting a white oak floor down, uh, that's a traditional nail down. Then I'll have them run the edger uh, all the way around the edges so that then when we drop the base down, we're not having to go back with a big you know, big sanding machine right, right. Uh, mm -hmm. around the edges. What, what would you suggest I do on a stellar floor so uh, I in love terms this. Of, <laughs> this is like, the, when do I put them down question. and what do I do about, about my trim? Yeah. So I love this question because this is something that the product itself has a, gives this benefit that often shocks contractors. And that is, I'd love to have you put your drywall up, you know, tape and, tape and uh, mud tape. your drywall, yeah. paint, then put your floors in. Mm -hmm. So like get all the wet stuff Done. done. Yeah. And then put your floors in. And the other nice part about my it stellar is floors, your is. stellar floors, okay. yep, your stellar floors, because there's no the, a lot of the reason they don't paint first is because of the sanding dust and the other mm -hmm. stuff that gets in there that then you got to touch all the walls and get them cleaned up. Yep. If you had a nice paint job, 
that could get messed up in sure. cleaning afterwards. But here, all your cutting's outside, it's already pre-finished, pre-sanded, everything like that. And so you, you can go pre in. Pre-assemble rows and push them against push the wall. Push them against the wall, yeah. So you don't even have your butt up against the wall trying to stuff. nail right. stuff, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yeah. And then as far as the, the baseboards go, on a hardwood floor, you should never be nailing through to the floor. Right. You should always be going back to the wall. Yep. So once you set this floor in, you need an expansion and contraction gap, which ends up being half inch expansion, half inch contraction on all around the room. Okay. So it's an overall inch that you need to have half of space inch on under both your sides. floor. Gotcha. Yeah. So the thing that I like is that with drywall, most drywall is a half inch. Yep. If you set your drywall up, up, you have half of that gap already yeah, which already means there. you don't need a beefy baseboard smart you can install that. it nice you're not scuffing stuff because then you just put your baseboard right over set it down tight to the top of the floor let it slip a little bit yeah. you know you don't yeah, want to yeah. be squeezing yeah yeah but set it down tight to the floor and install it as the last step yeah we would love for flooring to go in right before the furniture yeah mm -hmm. as and late as possible <laughs> well that makes sense right if yeah. the flooring goes in last mm. but because your tolerances are, are so tight you could also just i would think uh have your one one sample mm -hmm. case mm -hmm. slash block of your stellar and then go around your room and set your base to those yep. oh yeah to those blocks, yep. set your yep. doors mm -hmm. to those blocks and then you could slide that starter course underneath. Underneath, yep. Uh, 100%. Yep. So that there's no trim necessary. Well, and the right. question we get a lot is cabinets. So traditionally, there's always this wrestling match over, should I have flooring underneath my cabinets? Right, that's a great question. <laughs> and for us, you know, if you have, you know, a turkey go down over Thanksgiving, right, and you have wood in your kitchen, uh, do you want your flooring trapped underneath your cabinets? Because if you try and pull that plank, now you're disrupting right. the whole cabinet right. that you're sitting yeah. on. Yeah. Whereas so, with this floor, because you can heal it by pulling up planks mm -hmm, and increasing mm -hmm. the stagger, you're not going to have that square cut right. where the cabinet used to be. You can replace that with a plank that kind of yeah. merges it into, if you ever change your cabinetry yeah. around and like you want to heal renovation. that spot. Like a new renovation. No longer needs a T-strip. Right? right. If you add an, ex an extended room, you right. actually just stagger your planks through the doorway. Pull certain planks <laughs> and, and re-stagger right. it you and know. then build from there. But yeah, I like to say put the cabinet up on three quarter inch um, like Advantech or something, right. you know, a material like that. Yeah. And then butt your floor against to that, that to that so that the cabinet's the same height as the floor. Mm -hmm. But then you can still pop that board right that's against the cabinet without disturbing the yeah. whole setup. Yeah. Well, yeah, and if you sense. ever need to move your island or move mm -hmm, your cabinets, mm -hmm. you know, you can shuffle planks into that space that are already patinaed to match your floor, put new ones in the put shadow. Put new ones in the corner yeah, somewhere. Um, yeah. So, you know, in the sense that it's so flexible, you almost have to break how we traditionally think yeah. about floors, right? You yeah, almost have yeah, to, yeah. like, it's, it, it's a trip sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of a mind warp. you got to figure I need yeah. to I need to think about that. Because I would think that maybe it would make sense on an island, let's say, mm -hmm. to um, to have some kind of scribe mold go down uh, after yeah. the floors were in. But mm -hmm. I don't know you'd need that necessarily in your traditional base mold areas. Yeah. Uh, well, and it totally matters when the aesthetics need to line up. Right. Right. So mm -hmm. when when you have to have something perfect because it's a showpiece, mm -hmm. right? There's no reason you can't have your cabinets over your stellar floor. Sure. There, you know, there, yeah. there's no reason you can't. For us, we're always thinking practically, like, sure. how am I going to deal with this when someone leaves a faucet on and the sink backs right. up, yeah, right. right? Or you have a plastic <laughs> fitting on the back of your fridge and it fails sure. and it leaks or, out. Or, yeah, dishwashers. Yeah. Dishwashers. <laughs> oh, dishwashers. <laughs> But, but that does bring up a good point. Could you also sand and finish this traditionally, right? Just we, with a regular old drum you, sander? You we totally haven't tried can. it yet, but <laughs> you, you totally can. could. Yeah. It's a it's a connected system. It's all together. You could probably do the walkthrough. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, there's nothing about it that you couldn't. And it'd be better because it's all in one space, tight in the room. So mm -hmm. there's not really anywhere it's going to go. Right. So, yeah, you totally but can. But that, you, that again, dust and refinishing cost, man, that's... Mm -hmm. Well, that's rough to have in a home. And for yeah. us wanting to see it again, you know, if someone is sand over sanding one corner or mm -hmm. under sanding, you know, the reality is we would prefer for somebody to be spot dealing with a floor yeah. uh, and not refinishing corners of the room they never walked on. Yeah. Right. Because that's yeah. still a hundred year floor forever. Right. Yeah. If, if you've got a corner of the room you didn't walk on, why are you refinishing it? That's um, a great point. 
and you know maybe to change the color maybe you want to see a new stain in there yeah. mm-hmm. eventually once you refinish the wear areas enough you have to match the elevation so that you don't have a weird yeah. step so pattern but, dip in the middle but of the if, you're, yeah. if you're in a calibrated system so like i said i'm high on precision once you have a precise base to start from you could take less than a 30 second off of this and get a good refinishing surface. Yeah, you know, you only right. have to go down to your deepest scratch mm-hmm. to be able to fix that. You don't have to be taken yeah, a full sense. 16th or, or whatever off the top, which gives you a lot more refinishing life. Yep. And you don't have to refinish the whole floor to make it all match mm-hmm. until you're several times through your wear well, area. It's also why we don't hand scrape. We don't mm-hmm. have saw marks. We don't do that stuff because well, first of all, it's called distressing, and it does distress me personally, <laughs> right? You're, you're eating away at the, the wear surface floor. Yeah, you know, you're yeah. shortening, shortening its lifespan. Yeah. Um, and when it's hand scraped, you're seriously... Oh, those, like, those are deep gouges. Yeah, yeah, when you have to refinish all the way through the hand scraping, oh yeah. my goodness. So, you know, yeah. that's one of the things that we'll tend to avoid is making a really nice hardwood floor and scratching it before yeah. it leaves the building. I mean, we like yeah. to we like to say, you know, if you got a say a BMW, do you ask them to custom key your car before it leaves the lot? <laughs> it's sure it doesn't up before make, I you know, take delivery. Make it we'll look get a, a bunch little, of interior designers yeah, in the comments yeah, let's throw some stones in the windshield. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's hilarious. My but, wife and I have this running joke that whenever we have a new car, which we haven't had that many, but uh, usually within a month it has a pretty good size Dang it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when my wife got her BMW, uh, or when she got her Acura, rather, she had an Acura Legend that we bought in like 2004 or five, and we literally left the dealership and went to Taco Bell on the way to a hike, mm-hmm. and came out from Taco Bell and someone had backed it. Oh no. no! And they oh. they ran. So yeah. literally, it was the same day we got it. Oh, oh my And then gosh. her minivan that we got in 2011, it wasn't new, but it was new to us. Uh, a trailer came around the corner and scratched that. Oh, and no. now her new car has this random scratch that's a pretty deep one right by the <laughs> oh, driver's no. door that just showed up one day. Oh my god. So this is three cars in a row now <laughs> that, it, that we've gotten for 05, 2011, and now 2022 or 3. And they've all got a serious thing. <laughs> so too bad we can't just pop that panel yeah, off. Right. That panel off yeah. Pop the new panel off. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we do hope that people have the independence mm-hmm. to deal with the floor early and mm-hmm. often yep. rather than accumulating damage for decades. And living with it. Yep. And living with it. You know, we almost, it was in such poor taste, but we almost had a campaign that was like, just say no to rugs. Because the rogues are the way that people hide different, oh, you know, right. scratches mm-hmm. yeah. on the floor. Damn and it's like, w- if you felt that you could, you know, deal with the scratch when it happened mm-hmm. or deal with the puddle mm-hmm. from what we're calling misanthropic pets. Um, you know, <laughs> if you've got a puddle to deal with and you didn't catch it and now there's a stain, you know, are you going to live with it? Or are you going to just say, mm-hmm. hey, you know, for... 40 bucks, I can order a new plank from Stellar. Yeah. And yeah. pop, pop, we're done. That's pretty right? nice. Mm-hmm. Um, and so are people not ordering enough to have a few planks left over? They're literally ordering that some of them, Some of them do, but I mean, we don't we don't recommend the overage that a lot of standard hardwood floorings recommend. Yeah. We'll, you, what is it now that we're doing? We recommend 2 to 3% overage. Right. Because, yeah. because if we have any... So not 10 to 15 that a lot of people no. are saying. Right, Well, right. we'll replace any plank that doesn't meet spec. Right. Like, we, we do not send you trash. We shouldn't right. be making trash, right? So it's yep. inefficient to make If it trash. got out of our factory, <laughs> I want to know about it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> fix the problem that i have that made it if it if it happens so um but yeah as far as the overage goes i mean people have limited space in their homes sure they don't want to be storing massive amounts of construction material way too many boxes in my hardwood floor yeah yeah. (laughs) and i mean to be honest where are you going to put it the attic the garage and the shed that's not the great that's not the best place to have hardwoods well Well, sitting condition yeah yeah yeah. you're right so we see it as also our responsibility as a plank that can be refinished to have the finishes on file Mm -hmm. to be able to get you that plank in a reasonable amount of time yeah that's very cool so a lot of flooring companies one of the things our clients are are always saying is oh my god i didn't expect to get that kind of help from you 
right? That's great. So whether it's scribing near a fireplace or doing a renovation, and we're like, yeah, here's the video we found, you know, That's like here's awesome. how we would do mm-hmm. it. How cool. Or helping people figure out, you know, how to level their subfloors, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. They're like, we didn't really expect you guys to be helpful. And we're like, we did not get into this business. We didn't quit our day jobs to do something that wasn't worth doing. That's all. Awesome. Right. Yeah. And we, we're not going to make a product that's, that's cool, not right? worth buying yeah. because it's like wh- the, the world is full of cheap flooring options. Yes. We don't yeah. need to compete. I don't need in to be one space. of those. Yeah, that's right. right? <laughs> we must lead rather, the way somewhere better. Yeah. Like set of, the bar like, higher guys. Totally. Come on. <laughs> but, but yeah, I, so mean, I got a hard question for yeah, you. Yeah. Go ahead. Let's What's the most popular of all of your floors that you sell? It, like what is the lead horse these days? People are emotional. Oh, it I'll changes a lot. And they year get... to year, time of year to time of <laughs> Does year. It really? Oh my gosh, oh, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then sometimes it... I thought for sure you'd have a oh, definitely X, Y, and Z. No. So yeah. you get people who get so emotionally attached. Like we had people emotionally attached to Hickory. We've had people emotionally attached to White Oak. Mm-hmm. Um, That's funny. Yeah. I am not a Hickory guy. I do not like Hickory Me floors. Either. Yeah. I've installed them for either. lots of clients, and they. They look great, Eric, and your house. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I Hickory, like the thing that I do like about Hickory is if you do want a quote unquote rustic look, mm-hmm. use the material to get it. Get right. the variation right. from the heartwood sapwood variation. Don't get it from beating it with chains. Sure. Like get it from <laughs> something sense. like that. So like the hickories and the ashes. Um, well, you should have check out nice an ash variation. floor. Have you seen ash floors? I don't think I have. They're no. very pretty. They're going to be hard to get here soon. Oh, really? Yeah, the emerald ash borer is really devastating the United States' oh, wow. ash population. Interesting. So. But they're beautiful. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, hickory does this dark light thing, mm-hmm. which is I'm not into. Yeah, I don't like that either. But ash has a subtle variability. Mm-hmm. Um, and this it's a it's a traditional grain pattern. It's pretty strong grain pattern. Yeah. But, oh, it can be. It's a, it's a shop favorite. When we get an ash floor coming through everybody's like yay it's an ash time that's hilarious um, all right I let's think, play the marriage yeah. game okay. you can't you you cannot change your i'm gonna i'm gonna take you at your word that you haven't changed your answer okay britta would you do white or red oak in your house i have fallen in love with georgetown in your right red hand. oak yeah but i've it's just that Look one color you, but georgetown I, this is Georgetown stain, mm-hmm. I thought I hated it. I literally, I was like gray, grayish. Like I was rolling my eyes <laughs> and Evan was Evan was coming up with the custom stain colors. And now that every time I see it, I like it. That's like it's a grayish. Gray yeah. It's grayish. Like and it. like, oh, and HGTV has turned gray into like this oh, yeah, thing. There's so much of it. And there's so much of it. But then like every time I see it in a lineup, so we have 22 different options now. Mm-hmm. And every mm-hmm. time I see it in a lineup, I'm like that one. And I hate myself for Interesting. it. Interesting. I hate yeah. myself for it. All right, it Evan, is. what's what's your answer? Quartered white. Not this rift stuff, uh, like true just quartered, quartered not white. Rift yep. So quartered. did you know that rift, actually the industry slang for rift is called bastard sawn? Really? Because it's not that. flat sawn or quartered sawn. Oh, it's something in between. There's actually like grain angle specifics for the two. Huh. And so the thing that's cool about quartered is A, you get the awesome um, ray fleck. Okay. In it. So I'm talking true oh, quartered yeah, with the yeah, ribbons yeah, through sure. it. And it's pretty, I do like that. It's maximized for wear and extreme humidity variations. Oh, really? Because the expansion and contraction huh. on the radial is a lot less than it is when it's flat sawn. The green super And the stable. wear, because the wear on it, so here, like quarter, no, it? that's flat. Yeah. That's flat. So the wear on oak is going to be happen in your early wood bands. Okay. When you're quartered, the early wood bands aren't in the big cathedrals. They're stood up, so they're smaller. Right, right. So you have a lot more of the dense wood. But up you towards use the less of the wood, so you pay more for it, right? Is you, it like yes, there's a higher, there's there's a higher waste more. if you Wait. saw specifically for quartered. Okay. So all the times when you're grade sawing or flat sawing, so grade sawing is what the industry usually does. Okay. Um, when you're grade sawing, you produce some quartered boards. All right. But you have sense. to sort them. So you'd have yeah, to go the through the center ones are quartered or whatever. But yeah, yeah. It's certain, it's certain the arcs there, you'll hit mm-hmm. the quartered grain pattern. Right. So that's the type of quartered I like. There was also only a, our big nerds followed us on that one first. <laughs> <laughs> There's some industries some too. Know. Evan will draw a diagram if you really want. Oh my gosh, no, this is this <laughs> is what I love. Yeah, like no. the wood science <laughs> thing. Brent Hall knew exactly what we were talking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Guarantee you. But yeah, some industries will actually have quartered white oak as a waste material. Huh. So if you do um, veneer manufacturing of white oak, 
oftentimes the piece that's left over is a really nice piece of quartered. Yeah. And so, yeah, awesome. if you if you use it correctly, you don't force that waste, but you still get, if you have the right suppliers, you can still get really high quality material, but not awesome. force all the waste. Well, to and I think that overlooked future darling is maple. Mm. Maple floors. Beautiful. Mm. Because they have that iridescence and a glow. I don't like it. Oh. Not a maple guy. <laughs> it's so great. Is it was it, super hot it? in the 90s when yeah, I was building. Yeah. And oh. so I put so, a lot of maple down. No, but this, the and finish cherry, was cherry terrible. Was super cherry was super hot for a while Cherry's there. so soft. I, like I mean, it. it's a good, it's a pretty floor, oh, but it's so gonna, soft. We're going to change your mind The problem that. with cherry is that it sun tans whenever oh, you don't put like your rug down. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember yeah. a house that the client tried to tell me that they needed a new floor because this one was defective. And they like pulled the rug up and it was the original oh. cherry versus the dark. And I was yeah. like, no, I'm pretty sure that's that right. But I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. Let me ask my boss. I'm like 22 at the time. Yeah. I think that's I think that's correct. Yeah. Well, but the thing about maple, right, is when you think maple, you think gym floor from a basketball yeah. like gym. That's right? true. So it's yellow. Yep. And that's actually the older polyurethanes. Oh, that's so yellow. They have, they yeah. have yellow. Just, they're very yeah. thick. Yeah. And they're very yellow, mm -hmm. but modern polyurethanes, especially factory finished polyurethanes, UV cures, things oh, like UV that, yeah. are super clear, clear as a bell. You can get like a lily white maple floor, Interesting. and yeah. it is. <laughs> Now you have a three-year-old at home. I is there do. anything in your house that's lily white uh, no. that, that <laughs> no. stays lily no. white? No, no, no. But isn't that it's the goal of a the stellar floor? Very high isn't that the goal of a stellar floor? I have a floor? funny story for you about that. <laughs> the first house I remodeled uh, after I, no, the second house I remodeled after I was married, I hired this interior designer who was in her sixties. And she picked out the whitest carpet for our house. And I didn't mm. know any better. And we didn't have kids yet. We were mm -hmm. pregnant at first. That carpet looked so disgusting by about year three. <laughs> what with it with has carpet -year -old ever -year -old. not been disgusting? Carpet by... is disgusting <laughs> in general. That is true. Didn't they say that like f carpet weighs twice its weight when you remove when it you because it absorbs so much water? Oh my gosh, yeah. that's disgusting. Yeah. Have you ever stepped on carpet and it feels cool on your foot? Yeah. It's because it's humidity what? in the carpet. So oh, that's that water sense. built up in that carpet. Oh. Your body Didn't heat's that feel gross right then? Gross. That yeah. Gross. Yeah. Yeah. I unfortunately think that I have something to do with my daughter's asthma because I put her in a bedroom with carpet all those years. Mm. And she has been, um, she's actually kind of grown out of it now. But, you know, she was on an inhaler. She was on a steroid all these years. Uh, I made her grow up in a room with carpet. Uh, and when I... When I changed that white out, I should have put hardwood floors in, like mm -hmm. the rest of the house did. I just had carpet in the, in the three kids' bedrooms, mm -hmm. and I didn't. I put carpet back because I was being cheap. And so it's one of the it's one of the things that uh, that I just feel like as a builder, I need to coach people on. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I've put v mm -hmm. in the in the eighteen years I've been building for myself. I swear I've put probably less than. 20, 30 yards of carpet down mm -hmm. yeah. in all my houses I've built. Mm -hmm. yeah. We only do carpet or tile. Well, and it's air quality. It's I mean, air quality. It's yeah. so or, important. Yeah. or if you don't have the money for those two, put mm -hmm. concrete floors in. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Especially in Texas where you're slab on grade. Right. Just go slab on grade. Yeah. yeah. And that, save I mean, up till you can afford a stellar floor. And then it goes directly on top of your slab on grade. That's right. <laughs> exactly. The other thing is looking at like your perspective on I'm big on humidity control. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at it, if you take the humidity outside of the human comfort zone and you mm -hmm. go up above 50% relative humidity, you're starting to hit mold growth. Yeah, that's right. And so a lot of the problems with carpet isn't necessarily the carpet itself, which yes, has a problem, but if you have humidities in your house that are too high, you are just asking for it. You're if you keep it, it in the yeah. human comfort zone there, you know, the 50 to mm -hmm. 30% or 35%, 55 to 35, you're going to be a lot safer and totally wood will be very happy there. Yeah, that's right. Versus mm -hmm. like putting it in something that's 60 70 percent which is just ridiculous yeah. asking something to survive in that yeah. and we're coaching our clients on a regular basis about humidity if it gets too dry you have bloody noses you get Health dried problems, out yeah. you know you can get you know yeah. sort of sensitive um and then so you want to humidify but if it gets too moist you get Mold, mold growth, growth. Mm -hmm. and so when we mill our floors the other thing is that hvac has gotten a lot better mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. humidity control being able to do humidity control with the new hvac systems is so valuable 
Um, and what we do is we mill our floors for the human comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So what you'll find if you, if you're ever asking yourself, is this company making high quality wood products? And you go and you look and all their garage doors are open. <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> uh, we climate control our facility yeah. so that yeah. the wood is actually going to meet your interior climate, yeah. not yeah. the exterior climate of a garage door being open. Very smart. And then also we should be putting our hardwood floors into houses that are conditioned either yes. temporarily yes. Mm -hmm. or finally. Yeah. Yeah. And so we condition our houses temporarily through the yeah. construction process. Yeah. Yeah. And then at a minimum, you could at least dehumidify if yeah. you're in yeah. a humid climate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah which I did for years, so I was able to buy some heat pumps. Well, and uh, COVID put the hurt on windows, so everybody was asking us, can we get right. our floors in before the windows are in? That's and we're a like, no, real bad, really no. bad idea. Please, please no. don't do please that. Please do not do that. Wood is so strong. I've been on cases where they put the floor in before the windows were in, uh, and we got called in because the floor actually expanded to the point where it pushed the found the walls off the foundation. <laughs> the house was shorter because You're it laughing, literally but I pushed sense the walls pain. off the foundation. <laughs> like the wood is Yikes. unbelievable. That's in what it can bad. do like that's crazy yeah, it's wood's really strong nuts. i mean it's tree muscle yeah you know? it's well, well guys we spent the last hour telling everyone why they need a stellar floor and, <laughs> and I, that we're wood science i guarantee yeah. you've got some uh some new fans but tell us what we need to budget for because yeah. it's an important question i it mean is. we're talking about a family-owned company with mm. excellent products made in the factory in pennsylvania with huge precision yeah. uh that's going to last 100 years this is not a, uh, you know, a starter house product. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is not something that you're going to probably put in your uh, house that you're planning on not living in for some period of time. The people that are listening to this podcast care about durability and longevity. They want to build it right. They're building yeah. their uh, house that's going to be their last house. What should we budget? Yeah, I love this question. And so my dad has been in business my whole life. And so what he said to me was, you have an innovative product, you have an innovative approach to market with sustainability, living wages, but the real innovation will be when you're directly competitive with the bad guys, hmm. right? And so that's been a huge part of our goal and our push for the last mm -hmm. few years mm -hmm. um, is to get the price to the point where this is directly competitive with the bad guys. That's awesome. Um, so our base price is ten dollars a square foot. Dang. Pre-finished, mm -hmm. sealed on all sides. How about all that? the bennies. Yep. Today, five-inch wide pre-finished at a big box store is seven dollars a square foot in Altoona, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So, and we sell nationwide. So I'm sure in LA County, you're not getting seven dollars a square foot at a no. big box store. No, certainly not. But since we sell nationwide, in a lot of places, we're beat, beating the big box store That's shelves. Mm -hmm. And you're shipping out with standard carriers, or do you need yeah. to use a special it's freight line? LTL, and it can come directly to the job site. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you know if you've got walnut cigar room taste, we're in the 30s. Sure. Uh, but it's solid walnut, right? Walnut's really and, hard to get these and days. And it's mm -hmm. gorgeous. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. Um, um, and so, you know, in in if you have a study and you want to see that inspirational grain, and you want if you have a room, a bedroom that you really want to be special, walnut's a great choice. You don't have to do it throughout your whole house. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. true. You That's know? a great point. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so we we love the idea that this is an approachable product for anyone who's considering hardwoods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and the lifetime value, of course, knocks anything out of the park. Oh, yeah. for sure. Um, mm -hmm. inst inst install cost should be more in line with uh, LVP than with standard hardwoods. Mm -hmm. Um, and luxury vinyl plank, by the way, for those listening. For those who mm. like marketing schemes, <laughs> mm. um, luxury. You yeah. know, so we're we're thrilled because you know our base price is very approachable. That's amazing. Um, and you know, of course, you can go buy seconds at a mill in your neighborhood for you know five dollars a square foot or four dollars a square foot and install it yourself. And listen, if that, I would vastly prefer you do that than get LVP. Oh yeah, you know, totally. If that's much much you better know, product. Um, and so we have people coming to us and saying that costs double or triple. And I'm thinking, you're buying $2 or $4 square foot hardwoods? What? Where, where, where are you, you getting that? Yeah, totally. You know, like, what dumpster are you diving in? Like, I, I, don't, know. I don't know. Um, so, you know, I think when you compare us with any high-end engineered option, you know, at even at Builder Direct or, you know, one of the big direct mm -hmm. suppliers, engineered five inches wide, is going fourteen dollars mm -hmm. a square yeah. foot, yeah. Yeah. and with glue that can run seven to ten dollars a square mm -hmm. foot if you're getting the good stuff. For sure. 
Um, so we're really proud of our pricing. We're really proud of the fact that we're focused on living wage careers and on sustainability and that we're building a hundred year product at a competitive price. That's amazing. Um, mm-hmm. so we're swinging for the fences on this one. Love um, it. and, love uh, and we love our clients. We love the clients who come to us from the build show. You gotta tell <laughs> it. I gotta tell you, we have had some of the We most, had a couple build show people come. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And they're thoughtful. They're clever. They're innovative. Mm-hmm. You know, they're really, um, we've had the loveliest clients come to us from, from Build Show. So we're excited to, to hear How from How can folks. people get a hold of you guys? What's the best way to get a hold of y'all? Well, floorsbysteller.com. Floors um, by Stellar, S-T-E-L-L-E-R. E-R. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Evan's last name is Stover, and my last name is Teller, and when you uh, mash them together, uh, you get Stellar. Stellar. Got it. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. I'm not sure that came <laughs> I told my parents, you're going to have Stellar grandchildren. They didn't get it first either. <laughs> um, and um, so, yeah, so we're Stellar, floorsbystellar.com. Mm-hmm. Floor um, um, you can floor, float the floors over concrete. That's the other thing. Yeah, slab search. on grades. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful for our product. Yeah. Concrete's one of my favorite subsurfaces to put on. <laughs> Direct yeah. over concrete? Or uh, you, uh, six moisture mil poly. Moisture we do a six mil poly, lay okay. it down, and then just go from there. Okay. We like, didn't yeah. mean to bring up a new, whole new talking topic. Point. <laughs> but, uh, and Instagram. So, you know, we have a bunch of videos on YouTube. We have mm. a bunch of stuff. You know, we're regularly on Instagram. We're going live every Wednesday mm-hmm. uh, from our mm-hmm. studio to show how our floors get installed and answer questions. Oh, very mm-hmm. cool. That's um, awesome. So it's definitely um, a fun time to be part of a growing company uh, yeah. and making a dent in the industry. That's pretty awesome. A dent that's easily repaired. <laughs> <It's such a laughs> oh, it should have been yours. That was a perfect dad <laughs> joke. <laughs> you got to pass that on. Yeah, there. exactly. I'll keep that in the pocket next time. Mm. <laughs> Well, I'm excited to see you guys uh, over the coming years and see where uh, this adventure takes y'all because I think that you're poised for nothing but massive growth. <laughs> uh, and I'm also excited for this new series that we've got coming out with uh, Brent Hall that you guys are sponsoring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we talked about it at the top of the hour. It's coming out this summer. It's called um, uh, New House, Old Soul. And certainly Hardwood Floors and Floors by Stellar is a perfect fit Mm-hmm. for thinking about that house that you want to feel old and look old and last until it's old as well, which is one of the things I love about Brent. I mean, he's always uh, thinking about how can we build a house that's going to last. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's going to be really fun to, to see what Brent does in yeah. that series. And thank you guys for sponsoring yeah. uh, as well. We're thrilled about it. Yeah. And yeah. craftsmanship, you know, through the build show, understanding craftsmanship on site and building things to last mm-hmm. You know, we're proud to be a manufacturer who's working alongside folks who are really interested in the trades and growing the trades and craft based. And the science but and the science behind and it. And the science That's behind it. Yeah. So so we're really really excited to be a sponsor and uh, and help with the series just to help, you know, grow the industry. Love it. Britta Evan, thank you for coming. Wish you guys all success for sure. Awesome. Yeah, Thanks, thank man. Let's wrap up the podcast, yeah, guys. Thank you it. for joining us today. Special uh, podcast edition. Uh, plugging this new series that uh, Brent Hall. Check it out over on buildshownetwork.com. Uh, we'll be publishing that to YouTube, to all the places. Uh, we got a lot of fun stuff coming up. And in fact, we've got more than just that series. We've got several others uh, that are in the cooker right now. So stay tuned for some pretty exciting stuff coming out on the second half of 2023. With that being said, guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. Uh, we publish every Friday on this podcast. And oh, by the way, if you want to go watch the video version of this so you can see our, our cool samples and our hardwoods that we had, as well as uh, our shiny faces, you can go watch the podcast over on buildshownetwork.com. Follow us on TikTok or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on the Build Show podcast.